Okay, so welcome to this uh, next video on the adaptive immune response. Okay, so, what I want to now do is just make something that will save me a lot of time later. Okay, so, I have divided it up into this very, very uh, oversimplified division that the intracellular pathogens will go into the macrophages and then their antigens will be chopped up and antigen fragments will be presented on MHC class 1. Then I've also had these extracellular pathogens which will be phagocytosed by the macrophages and then they'll be broken down within the phagosome and then antigen fragments will then be loaded on MHC class 2. However, it's not quite that simple because if you consider the intracellular pathogen it does it spend its entire time intracellularly? Well, the answer is no, okay? So, for instance, if you're a virus, you go into a cell, you divide in the cell, you make the cell make loads of copies of you, and then you flee the cell, you break the cell open, or you just bud off the cell. So the cell starts releasing loads of new virion particles, and then the virions have to temporarily be extracellularly before they go and find another cell to infect, okay? So, whilst they are extracellular, they can end up being phagocytosed by macrophages, and if they're phagocytosed and broken down within a phagosome, their antigens will end up well, their antigen fragments will end up presented on an MHC class 2 complex on the surface of one of these professional antigen presenting cells. Okay, so intracellular uh, pathogens will actually activate both of these, whereas the extracellular pathogens will only activate this one. Okay, and that's going to become important later. Okay, so keep that in mind that intracellular pathogens are activating both of these and extracellular pathogens are really just activating this one here. Okay, so back to the uh, activation of the T cells then. So, these macrophages or these dendritic cells, more likely dendritic cells than macrophages, um, these dendritic cells or macrophages are coming in through this afferent lymph vessel and they are percolating through these layers of T-cells. Now, we need to discuss something about T-cells. T-cells, then. Basically, a T-cell is a cell which has a structure like this. It has a massive great nucleus. Lymphocytes are usually very easy to see in histology because they have massive great nuclei which give them away, basically. Okay, now, uh, T-cells can be of one of two types, okay? They can be what are known as CD4 positive T cells, which means that they have CD4 proteins on their surface, which I'll show here. Okay, and why have I drawn it over here? Right, okay, we'll make this the CD8 positive one, okay? Because it's, <laughs> I've put the name over here, so I might as well draw the CD4 positive one over here. Right, okay, so you can have these two types of T cells. Okay, one which is the CD8 positive T cell, and one which is a CD4 positive T cell. And at the moment, both of these T cells are what are known as naive T cells. So they are just sitting within the lymph node, and they have never seen antigen at the moment. They've never been activated. So we have naive CD4 positive T cells, and naive CD8 positive T cells. So this protein on the surface of the naive CD4 positive T cells is CD4, which stands for cluster of differentiation or cluster of designation 4. And these CD8 positive naive T cells have CD8 on their surface, which stands for cluster of differentiation 8 or cluster of designation 8. Okay, now, both of these types of T cells also have another very important protein on their surface, which is known as the T-cell receptor. Okay, so this is a T-cell receptor, or a TCR for short. Okay, so the shorthand for this is a TCR. Okay, right. And here is the TCR on the surface of the CD4 cell. Right, 
So, this is where something really important becomes necessary to understand, and this is a difficult concept. Okay, so this is the most important concept of all, basically. That in this lymph node, we have an absolutely huge number of T-cells. All of these T-cells will have a different TCR. So basically, this structure here, it has a reasonably conserved structure. However, at the centre here, where it's going to bind to an antigen fragment, this bit is not conserved between the different T-cells. This is different between each and every T-cell. So in the lymph nodes, you will have absolutely loads of CD8-positive naive T-cells. You will also have absolutely loads of CD4-positive naive T-cells in the lymph node, in both the cortex and the paracortex. But if you go round that lymph node, looking at the different uh, naive T-cells, what you will find is that the T-cell receptor antigen fragment binding portion is different on every single naive T-cell in that lymph node, basically. Okay, so all of the TCRs bind to a different antigen fragment. They recognize a different antigen fragment. Okay, so let me color in the TCR in blue here. Right, so what's the significance of this? Well, remember our professional antigen-presenting cell is now coming in to the lymph node and it's bringing in its MHC, uh, major histocompatibility complex, whether this is type 1 or type 2, which has an antigen fragment on it. Now, professional antigen-presenting cells which are trying to present uh, MHC class 1, those are going to need to find a CD8 positive T cell, and those which have got an antigen fragment mounted on MHC class 2 are going to need to uh, find a CD4 positive T cell. Okay, so remember in if we've got an intracellular pathogen, we will have t macrophages which have both um, MHC, uh, well, have both antigen fragments on MHC class 1 and also on MHC class 2, whereas if we've got an extracellular pathogen, generally we'll just have antigen presenting cells with uh, antigen fragments mounted on MHC class 2. Right, so let's draw this process now. So we'll start off with CD4 positive. Okay, so how do you activate a T cell then? So what will happen is this macrophage, which has this antigen fragment presented on it, will percolate through the layers upon layers of T cells, and it will be searching, basically, for a T cell that has a T cell receptor which binds to the antigen fragment that it's trying to present. Okay, so let's show this. So here is our CD4 here, okay, and here is our T-cell receptor, so let's put the T-cell receptor here. And I haven't actually told you what the function of CD4 is yet. CD4 binds to the major histocompatibility complex class 2, okay, whereas CD8 binds to the major histocompatibility complex class 1. So let's say that our macrophage here is, has got an antigen fragment loaded on MHC class 2, and I've just realized how far back I've Drawn, drawn this. So MHC class 2 is going to have to be stretched hugely. Okay, so this is MHC class 2 here. And really, CD4, it should be binding here, okay? Um, hmm, never mind. Uh, so, what's happening is here comes our macrophage, which has on an MHC class 2 molecule here, major histocompatibility complex class 2, it's got some antigen fragment here. Okay, now this antigen fragment, let's suppose that it is perfectly suited for this T-cell receptor to bind to. So we've searched and searched and just managed to find a CD4 positive naive T-cell which has a T-cell receptor that is complementary to uh, the antigen fragment which we are presenting. So let's colour this in. So here is the T-cell receptor on the surface of the T-cell, 
and it has now bound, it's found an antigen fragment that it's complementary to, basically. So here is the antigen fragment in turquoise here, and then we'll have the major histocompatibility complex, class 2, on our antigen-presenting cell. So I might just denote this as an APC rather than labelling it as a macrophage, because after all, it's the dendritic cells which are uh, the major professional antigen-presenting cell which will be doing this. Okay, and then I just want to extend this CD4 a little bit because it really should be binding to the MHC class 2. Okay, and this is why the antigen-presenting cell cannot um, present this antigen fragment which is loaded on MHC class 2 to a CD8 positive T cell because CD8 will not bind to MHC class 2. So here in green, this is the CD8. Okay, right. So, the antigen-presenting cell has searched long and hard for a naive CD4-positive T-cell, uh, which has a complementary T-cell receptor to the antigen fragment that it has uh, got presented in its MHC class 2 protein. The CD4 will then bind to the MHC class 2, and if all of this works out, what that will cause is signal 1 to this T-cell. So we're trying to activate this T-cell. This is signal 1 of activation of the um, CD4 positive T-cell. In order to activate it further, well, in order to activate it at all, you have to give it another signal known as signal 2. Now, this finally is where I get to explain to you what the difference between a professional antigen-presenting cell and all other cells of the body are. Basically, all other cells of the body can present antigens, but they don't have the ability to activate T-cells. And the reason they don't have the ability to activate T-cells is that they cannot provide the molecules that are necessary for signal 1. Okay, so, if this antigen-presenting cell, which remember is either a dendritic cell or a macrophage, really has found a pathogen in the uh, interstitial fluid from whence it came, then its pathogen, re uh, sorry, its pattern recognition receptors will have detected all sorts of PAMPs, okay, uh, pathogen associated molecular patterns, remember. And this will have activated the uh, antigen presenting cell to put on its surface certain proteins, okay. And there are two proteins that are utterly necessary for you to put on your surface. And I realise now that I've written that CD4 exactly where I want to show these two proteins, which is really annoying. Uh, well, where I want to show the receptors for these two proteins. Okay, so we'll have to just do our best. So, basically, what are these two proteins that you need to put on your surface? Well, one of them is what's known as CD40. Okay, so if the antigen presenting cell finds uh, pathogen associated molecular patterns, then they will bind to its pattern recognition receptors and it will put on its surface these molecules which are known as co stimulatory molecules. Now you might wonder, well, what on earth is the point of this? Well, basically, it's protection, it's to make sure that the antigen that this antigen presenting cell is presenting on its MHC class 2 really is an antigen from a pathogen. Now, if it was from a pathogen, then the antigen presenting cell must have found pathogen associated molecular patterns, which must have activated its PRRs and led to the expression of these two molecules. So that's what these are for. They are to check that this really is from a pathogen. Okay, so. CD40, we'll put in orange here, okay, and then the other molecule that you have to put on your surface, this molecule here, this can be one of two molecules. It can either be B7.1 or it can be B7.2, okay, and these both have other names. So B7.1 is also known as CD80 and B7.2 is also known as CD86. So you need one of these to um, be the other co-stimulatory molecules. Okay, I should have completed co-stimulatory molecules there. Okay, 
Right, um, so let's have this B7.1 or B7.2 in red here. Right, now what are these going to bind to? Well, they have receptors on the T-cell, okay? And the receptors on the T-cell that they have are B7.1 or 7.2 has a receptor known as CD28, which is what I've tried to show here, although it's gone through the CD4 there. So this is CD28. Okay, so what colour shall I show this in? I'll show it in vivid purple. Okay, so there's CD28, which will bind to either B7.1 or B7.2. And then CD40 has a protein known as um, CD40 ligand, okay, or CD40L for short. Right, so we'll show that in turquoise. So, this is the complex that you're going to form, and this is what's known as an immune synapse, basically. This connection between the professional antigen-presenting cell and the T-cell. It's what's known as an immune synapse, okay? So, when the antigen-presenting cell brings in its uh, antigen fragment on MHC class 2, it will search long and hard for a uh, CD4 positive T cell, and it must be CD4 positive, otherwise it won't bind to the MHC class 2. Uh, and uh, that CD4 positive T cell needs to have a T cell receptor that actually will bind to this antigen fragment, and most of them won't, so it will have to search long and hard for a CD4 positive T cell that has a good fit, basically. When that first half of this complex forms, that gives signal 1 to the T-cell. However, to actually activate the T-cell, you need another signal, known as signal 2. And for this, the professional antigen-presenting cell needs to have put on its surface uh, certain co-stimulatory molecules, such as CD40 and either B7.1, also known as CD80, or B7.2, also known as CD86. And these will bind to their receptors on the surface of the T-cell, which are CD40 ligand for CD40, and CD28 for B7.1 and B7.2, and that will deliver signal 2 to the T-cell. Now, normal cells cannot put on their surface these co-stimulatory molecules. These are activated, their expression is activated by the activation of pattern recognition receptors within the antigen-presenting cell, which is either a dendritic cell or a macrophage, which will be activated by pathogen-associated molecular patterns. Now, we'll continue this discussion in the next video.